Hi there, Virgo, and welcome to your monthly forecast. This is for the month of August, and it's always great to see you. I hope you're doing well. I think you're gonna really enjoy what I have in store for you this month because I've added a little something extra. In addition to going really in-depth for each and every sign, I also wanted to tap into the energy for everyone for this month. So I did a meditation before I started all of the readings, and this is what came through for me. The first thing that I saw was the moon itself, not just the card, but actually the moon. And then I picked up on an image that reminded me of the magician, something channeling energy from source. Let's first talk about the moon. For me, the moon is both powerful and subtle. So when we're looking at intuitive messages, that means that when you receive guidance this month, it could come through in a very simple but persistent thought. You could have a gut instinct that's kind of just making you go one way or another, or you could be picking up on information in dreams. In short, you really want to honor the first message or the first feeling that you receive when going through things, and you want to make time for meditation this month if you can. It's really going to help you navigate all of the challenges for the month ahead. The moon is also a highly receptive energy. It's divine feminine energy. So that means that you can take something that you really want to bring into fruition this month and nurture it. So I would encourage you to do that as well. The third component, and this is something that you would see in the moon card itself, is that things that you are afraid of or maybe you haven't been able to deal with or look at, they're going to come through this month as well. They could appear perhaps for some of you in dreams, or it might be something that because you're afraid to see it, it comes through because the universe wants you to basically let go of that or um, integrate whatever that fear, that hope, that desire is, because the moon is also a very primal side. That's why in the illustration on the card, you'll see a domesticated dog and then a wolf. It's that kind of nexus between what we feel and what we know and what we've been taught to do. So you might be encouraged this month to divert from that path of, you know, what's expected. Now the magician is coming through once you've owned all of those messages, once you've done the integration, then you're going to be able to channel and really pull the energy into something this month. But the fears, the desires, the uncertainties, they have to be managed. And after this retrograde period that we just came through, there's a shadow for the first week or so. So as we look at basically the first through the maybe the 14th even, you're going to be experiencing some of these things in dreams and thoughts in situations that come through in life. Be very aware, be very awake, be very grateful for these because these little triggers that are going to appear will help you as the month proceeds to um, basically be set up for success. If you pass these little tests, if you don't freak out, then you're going to be able to really make this month a fantastic month, okay? So that's a little bit of energy and a little bit of information that I'm delivering to each sign. Uh, I do record it fresh for each sign, so your interpretation is a little bit different than what I've said for other ones. So um, please embrace that. Now I'm going to get into sign-specific information. And in order to do that, I'd like to just kind of tell you how everything is organized. Before I begin, I'd like to say thank you and welcome back to all of my return viewers. You make it worth my while every month, and I love seeing the journey that you've all taken, especially those of you that have been following me for four or five years. It's great to see you still here. Thank you so much. If you're brand new, I'd like to welcome you and introduce myself. My name is Nicholas Ashbaugh, and this is the way that each and every reading is set up. I like to begin with channeled information, and this is me just tapping into my intuition and talking about what I see and feel. I really like that part, I think you will too, so that'll be here in just a minute or so, so stick around. Right after that, I will go much deeper into what's available. This is gonna show you the highs, the lows, the in-betweens, and this is when I use the cards and I pull a full Celtic cross. Much like the channeled information, that is organic. I can't control what comes through, but I know that you all love to see certain areas of your life, so what I've done is created an extended forecast where we look at health, wealth, love, and destiny. I'd like to remind you, you can always use this for your sun, your rising, and your moon sign. You can also watch for someone in your life that you love. And if you don't happen to know sun, rising, and moon, then just stick with the sign that you were born under and you'll get all the information you need just by doing that. So as you can see, this is a very comprehensive, very deep dive into everything for the month of August. And if you like what you see here, I would encourage you to stick around until the very end. In addition to a summary and a closing word, I also let you know how you can give back to the channel. This includes liking and subscribing, joining me on social media, booking an appointment, or becoming a patron by using my website or even the join button here on YouTube. 
I'm gonna get into all of that information at the end, but I know right now you'd like to hear about the forecast, so let's get straight into your channeled information for the month of August. Upon selecting a deck of cards and meditating for your sign, the image that I saw was this space. I wouldn't necessarily call it a room. It was just sort of this open space where I found that there were portals or doorways that were leading to different opportunities for you. Because the space was a little bit abstract, I could also open doors above and below me, not just to the right, to the left, or in front or behind. For me, this meant that there were a lot of opportunities for you this month, and they could be coming from directions or sources that you may not expect. So it's important for you not only to keep your mind open, but also to explore some of these opportunities. So I put explore options. There's more than one way. Uh, that was the channeled information. This could be one way to get something done, one way out of a situation, uh, or just one, more than one solution. So I really want you to not be constrained by expectations from others through habits that have been created either in your organization, in your family, or in your own life. Basically, there's a lot of energy that's going to allow you to mold, to shape, and to form whatever you need to this month. You don't have to worry about imaginary walls that we sometimes build around ourselves. So be creative, take some risks, if you will. That's the energy of the fool coming through there. And know that your intuition, that primal knowledge, more the sort of moon intuition than the high priestess, you're going to know on a heart and a soul and a gut level what to do. Don't second guess that. It's really important to honor that this month more than ever. Okay, so that is your channeled message this month. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the Celtic Cross. As you know, I like to remain quiet at this point, but right afterwards, I'll pull up each and every card and relay all the messages for the month ahead. All right, here's your Catalyst card for the month, and I would like to compare and contrast it here with your near future card, the Ten of Wands. Now, we're gonna turn it upright just so you can see the two illustrations. And if you notice, these figures are kind of walking in separate directions. This card, which was in the near future, shows someone that is feeling a little burdened, but nearly finished with something. And this one looks like a brand new beginning to me. So for many of you, there's going to be a chance to wrap something up and try something new. But in order to do that, you have to let go, you have to move on. That's the simplification for many of you. And it's saying that that decision is easier than you think. It's just a matter of taking a step in that direction. The last message that comes through on this is that there's simply a need to take a leap of faith. And as we get into the two center cards, I wanna talk about that a little bit more. Again, this came through reverse, so some of you are just holding on to something. And as we look at all the cards in front of us today, I'll help you identify where those uh, sort of areas where you're being tethered are and then hopefully help you release that. Your centermost card is the Five of Cups. Sometimes this can indicate healing after a period of mourning. Maybe there was a disappointment. Maybe you've lost someone or something in your life and one of the things that's necessary is just that ability to sort of allow your heart to be vulnerable again. And it's tough. It doesn't matter what it is. For some of you that are artists, this can be, you know, facing rejection again, maybe wanting to put yourself out there and see if people like what you're producing. For those of you that might have had a breakup, this can also mean that it's sort of difficult to be dating again. Or if someone hurt you in an existing relationship, the same thing is true. Can you trust them? That trust is coming in especially strong when we look at what crosses this, which is the Five of Swords. With the Five of Cups, there's always a decision to be made on your part. When I'm looking at this, one word came to mind, which was courage. I feel like some of you have already made the decision, but you're afraid to move forward. But the question usually is, is the predictability and the sort of safety of staying better than the risk and the opportunity of moving forward and trying something new? So it's 
the safe versus the unknown. I think some of you are ready for the unknown, but you just need to take that first step. And you notice in this particular illustration, you see that person getting very close to putting like one foot in the water. And I think maybe that's one way that you could approach things this month is, you know, yes, the fool is great and taking a leap of faith is great, but you can also be more like temperance if you want to. Just test the waters a little bit. And if it feels good, go a little bit more, go a little bit more. Because I feel that the minute you start to allow yourself to move forward, you're gonna pick up momentum you're going to start channeling information, your heart's going to open up, and things are going to take off for you. Another message that I get when I look at what was crossing it, the Five of Swords, is take what you need and move on as well. Sometimes as light workers, as healers, as just empathic people, we want to stay and fix everything, but pay attention to the friction in communication. Five of Swords is probably one of the most difficult cards when it comes to being able to have fluid communication. The Five and the Seven, especially, things break down. Um, they're not as bad as an argument, which you would see in the Ten, or Heartbreak, which you would see in the Three, but things are not firing the correct way with the Five card here. So what I would say with you is, if there's a disagreement that comes through, decide, is this something that I need to pursue? Um, did I get what I needed simply from understanding that this person is agitated with me? Tread carefully, tread lightly, because it may be a no-win situation. And it could simply help you make a decision that, yes, this really is time to move forward. As we look at the deep past, which is showing some of the skills and the strengths that you've developed the most leading up into this month, your power is actually not so much in your communication, but how you hold yourself, what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, the power of your mind. And also, again, your actions are gonna speak a lot more clearly and more powerfully than your words this month. The Queen of Wands is one of the best cards when it comes to being able to manage challenges in front of you, finances, business situations. It's a great card for ideation, for brainstorming. So focus on all of that. Don't get involved in petty dramas or arguments. Try not to let your emotions pull you into a sort of deeper or darker place that you don't need to go. Instead, focus on all of the opportunities in front of you. These two wands cards are very important. This is deep past, this is recent past. To me, the seven of wands shows me that you can handle anything that comes your way. In fact, this month, you're most likely going to have so much going on that you might need to ask for help or delegate. If people around you won't do that, this tells me that you're gonna be good at prioritization. As we look in the crowning position, we have a very promising card here. We have a princess of pentacles, which is equivalent to a page in this deck. And for me, pages are something that indicate a delivery or a receipt of something. And so when we look at pentacles, that could be money, a job opportunity, or if you were thinking of creating something like a product or a service or a business, this shows it coming into fruition and possibly being something that people want to pay for. So for those of you that are in research and development or an engineer, this could be something that you could get even a patent for. So there's some exciting development in that area. And overall, when I'm looking at your money and your resources, I'm not concerned. That's your crowning card this month. I mentioned a few moments ago that I would look at potential moments where you could be tethered or held back. And this is one of them, because if you look really closely at this page card, you'll notice that she's glancing at this big opportunity illustrated by the coin or the pentacle in front of her. And it's almost as if she can't let it go. And if you've ever really had something that maybe you've worked on for five years, 10 years, or it could be a lifetime goal or aspiration, when you're faced with that moment that it actually could happen or there's a contract in your hands, it can be scary. And I think some of you might be at that point where you're thinking, can I really let go of this? Or is this the right person or the right company that is going to handle my baby <laughs> with love and care? You have to search your soul and your heart for that. If it feels good, move forward. If it doesn't, obviously honor that. Just because I know some of you would like me to look, I'm gonna say what I see here is that there really aren't any indications that you're headed down the wrong path. I do see, however, that some of you may be negotiating with a person that is very headstrong because in the environment, we have strength reversed. 
This can be someone that is relentless when there's sort of a certain item in a contract or when it comes to the two of you trying to see eye to eye. Again, going back to the Five of Swords. Be strong if this is something that you know is worth the money and worth the fight. Because ultimately, you're gonna be able to work it out with that person if it's some sort of a contract negotiation. Your product, your service, your idea is good enough that it deserves that, um, that support. And we have judgment in the outcome in the upright position. It's called rebirth here, but judgment nonetheless. And judgment upright usually means that you're gonna get the outcome that you want, especially when it's connected to the two of cups here. So keep your negotiation skills strong. And the seven of wands is a card of fighting. So fight for something that you care about. If it's your baby, if it's a project that you've held near and dear, and it's equivalent to giving birth, you know, when you've put all that love and uh, energy and time into something, then don't worry about it. It's going to be okay. Because also in the near future here, I see the ten of wands. The ten of wands for many of you means that this is going to move forward, that it is time to let go. And that for, for some of you, this fear, this anxiety is just over, will I be okay? What am I going to do now that this is done? Now, let's take a shift here and look at some other things that these cards could mean. The Princess of Pentacles could be a new love interest or a new partnership coming in for some of you. And it could involve a move. It could also be a new job opportunity that could involve a move or travel at the very least. The Ten of Wands is showing you going between two locations. Remember, if this is the case, you may want to keep one location if you can and choose to travel, but just not carry everything with you. In this case, it is very much like Temperance where you decide to sort of do a short-term trial before committing to something. So that could be a temp to perm job. It could be living with someone before getting married. It could be just deciding that before I up and move everything, I'm going to try this out for a few months and see if it's the right thing for me. For those of you that might be making a work-related move, see if the company can pay. Because with the Page of Pentacles upright, right in that crowning position, and with the Ten of Wands right next to it, there's no need for you to do everything. And again, we have judgment upright in the outcome. In your ego this month, we have the very contemplative Seven of Cups. Now, as I said earlier, this month you're going to be very adept at brainstorming and ideation. The Seven of Cups is a perfect marriage to the Queen of Wands, and it's also a great connection here to the Page of Pentacles. However, when it's in a position like Ego, it can sometimes show a tendency to overthink and to go past something that is intuitive. So, oftentimes we know what to do immediately, but we think so much that we kind of talk ourselves in and out of that situation to the point that we get exhausted and we have to talk to someone else. Don't go there this month. Again, I feel like you know what you need to do. Honor that initial intuition. That's going to lead you in the right direction. The other thing with the Seven of Cups is you could kind of look at this as an inverted pyramid for the month. Start off with all those opportunities, thinking of all the options that you want to explore and narrow the field down as you go through the month. By the end of the month, many of you are going to be faced with a decision. I like that it shows rebirth. I like this title. Instead of just judgment, it's showing a brand new opportunity. You're walking through a new door and you're coming through feeling like, the, like this baby here, like the sun, because this card also reminds me of the sun. You usually see a little baby riding on a horse. So it's worth the journey. It's worth the risk. It's worth that leap of faith. And uh, for many of you, this decision, though, is tied to somebody else, because right underneath it, we have the two of cups. So if you have a partner, whether it's business or love, you may have to kind of hash this out with them and see how it works. Let's talk about your environment card for a moment. We have the strength card in reverse. Now, as I said earlier, this could simply be an allusion to the fact that you need to really be strong and use your voice and not allow other people to dominate or push you into a position or a situation or decision that you don't want to be pushed into. It can also indicate exhaustion. This is something you definitely want to take seriously because as we look at near future, we have the Ten of Wands. You notice that heavy burden on the back. So for those of you that are somehow involved in manual labor or if there is a move and you're going to be packing boxes or if you carry like a heavy backpack or attache or purse, 
maybe lighten the load a little bit this month, shift it to the other shoulder, and just take special care of your body. If you haven't had like a chiropractic adjustment in a while and that's something you wanna do, this would be a good time to do that. Be careful, don't overdo it, um, and know that as you moderate your physical stress on your body, that's gonna allow you to be able to handle all of these opportunities in front of you. When I'm taking a look at your hopes, fears, and opportunities, I have a fortuitous card here for love. Many of you may be engaging in a new relationship, whether it's business or maybe even a professional one, but there are a couple of footnotes that I want you to pay attention to. First of all, there has to be equal footing because if you're doing all of the texting, telephoning, reservations, etc., you need to push some of that onto the other person. This holds true more for business relationships than personal, but for personal ones, the same thing is true. Either we have two people that have the same communication styles and you're sort of butting heads, or there's one person that is doing a lot more of the work. You need to sort that out and think, is that the kind of relationship that I want? Some people do. So it just depends if you like to be in the driver's seat or if you like to be driven. Make sure that that person is fitting in that role because I see that there might be a little bit of a mismatch for some of you. The other thing that I'm seeing play out in both new and old relationships this month is karma. And with the rebirth or with the judgment card, this is really you looking back and thinking, I don't have to repeat what was. Um, I can create something brand new and we can have a fresh start this month. Finally, let's just take a look at judgment or rebirth on its own. And as I said earlier, some of you may have a decision to make. A decision about, should I go into this relationship or partnership? Is it right for me? Should I sell my idea, my product, my service? Should I take this job? Am I ready to move? Is that okay? Is this something that feels good for me? Those are big decisions. Those are big life shifts. Even though we didn't get the world, death, or the tower, we actually get a more empowering one here, which is you've got to make a decision. It's up to you on some levels. For some of you, this decision could also be one that you're dealing with because your partner's making it. And because we have the two of cups attached to it. So you might be the one that is deciding, do I want to move along with that person? Is this something that I feel like is also good for me in my life? So you're going to have to have a heart to heart with someone this month. Ultimately with the rebirth card, it's a chance to start fresh. So if you've cleared the karma, if you've made the decisions, you now get this fresh, clean slate. And it's almost, for some of you, it could be a scary thing, right? Now what? Now what do I do? I had this comfortable, predictable thing, and now everything is sort of a big question mark and a big opportunity. Remember, that's kind of what I think I saw with the room of portals or doorways. There is no wrong way as long as you're using your heart as the compass to lead you in the right direction. So let's now move along to the expanded forecast. We're going to start with the health card and this is mind body and spirit so it's not simply what's going on in your body it also is how you feel energetically what you're carrying with you we saw that for some of you there might be a need to cleanse or relieve or release i should say some of the burdens so we'll see if any of those messages come through As we look at health, the message has to do with some decisions that you're making in your environment. We have um, a fierce warrior here and the message underneath is about unity. But the fact that the card is reversed can show that for some of you, you're kind of spinning wheels and stuck in a situation that is just perhaps exhausting you. That for many of you, it's a feeling like there's a, a no-win situation and that it's time to move on. Move up, move on, move out. There's, a, there's some sort of a, a feeling that it's time for that. If you're feeling that sense that now is the time, then please honor it. And also maybe take a vacation because the Ten of Wands is showing that the, the burden and the stress that you're holding on to in your life, it's a little much at this point. So for those of you that are employed and dealing with a lot of pressure at work, do what you can to delegate or to simply prioritize as we talked about earlier. For the rest of you, I'm observing an opportunity here for you to allow other people to step up. What I see is that many of you have a tendency to pick up the pieces. Strength reversed is a very maternal card and it's a very controlling card. This warrior princess as well, being someone that would come in and just tell people what to do, has a very similar energy. 
The seven and the ten of wands, also cards where you might be holding on to too much. Let some things go this month. Remember, simplify. I would say this also has to do though with people, whether it's a coworker, a sibling, a spouse, anyone in your life that tends to just figure, you know what, you're gonna pick up the pieces, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Unless there's something radically bad or difficult that's gonna happen because you don't pick up the slack, let a couple of things go and let that person have to panic and, and basically kick into first gear and fix things a little bit. This is going to create stronger relationships, not only now, but in the future. This will give you the true energy of the Two of Cups, which is partnership. I have your back, you have my back, we're not gonna worry about this. I pick up the slack sometimes too. That's what you want, you want reciprocity. You don't have to fix everything. This is gonna take that burden off of you. This is gonna lighten the load. This is going to allow you to move forward. And until you allow other people to step up, you're not gonna feel like you can move on. I think this hits parents a lot because it's hard to let your children make mistakes. But again, if it's a small mistake that's not going to impact their overall life, they're gonna be stronger through that lesson. You're also going to be able to take a deep breath and think, let them come to me and ask for help. Because with strength reversed especially, actually, this card can show that that love, that affection, can be misdirected and sometimes stunt growth. So if you're the person doing it, then stop. If you're the person receiving that sort of micromanagement or again, like a helicopter mom or dad, push back on that and say, let me make my own decisions this month. And maybe that will cause a little bit of an argument, but stand your ground on that. That is worth um, picking and choosing that particular fight or argument because in the long run, it's going to provide that energy that we see here in the Two of Cups. And it's really gonna to get to the core of what we see here, which is unity and cooperation and not having to fight all the time for something. So that was a lesson that took me a long time to learn. You don't always have to do everything for everyone. And sometimes when you let something slip like that, then people learn what your limits are. They also realize, hey, I need to do a little bit more. And you won't notice that same behavior in the future. All right, so let's go ahead now and move along to wealth and see what's coming through, not just for money, but also like self-worth and opportunities as well. The message in wealth is you already have the knowledge that you seek. We have Odin here, psychic insight, but for all intents and purposes, this could simply be the hanged man reversed because he is the person that's represented in that card when we go back mythologically and look at it. But let's go ahead and read the message here. It says, Odin, psychic insight, your third eye is open. See the truth for what it is, follow your intuition. So there's no more room or no more need for hesitation. You've paused long enough. It's not only important, but appropriate now to act upon that inner knowledge, that inner feeling going way back to what I was talking about at the beginning with the moon. This is a connection to that as well. The time has come to honor what you already know and step forward and break free. So if you've been waiting, the, this is really saying it's time to make your decision. The wait is over. And that's really all there is to say on that other than you may be receiving information in dreams and visions, or again, through just this inner knowing. Trust it, trust that inner knowledge because it won't lead you astray. And for many of you, if you've been wondering, when should I act, act now, okay? Let's go ahead now and move along to love, knowing that love is not simply your romantic relationships, but how you connect with everyone in your life that you care about. The message in love this month is actually centered on you, not so much on the people around you. It uh, reads, infinite abundance, you're fully supported as you devote yourself to your divine life purpose. Now, for those of you that are in a relationship, this is showing that it's okay for you to put a little bit of time and energy into something like training, school, or doing something that you just love, setting aside some time for something that is important to your path on this planet. 
That doesn't mean that you give everything up in the relationship. It just means that you don't feel bad if there's a part of this that you really want to dedicate to personal development. Because especially for those of you that are partnered, that person originally fell in love with you because of all of these passions that you have. And you could remind them this month that this is something that's necessary to allow you to continue to blossom, to grow, and to experience joy in your life. And you are two whole people in the relationship. So find a way to nurture and to honor those things that really attach to your soul purpose. If you are single, it's showing that a lot of the energy, even though partnership is available, you may decide to put it into something, as I said earlier, like school or training. That's completely fine if that's something that you want to really focus on. And even if you're dating someone this month, there's still going to be a little bit of a tug of war between your personal life and something that is either pulling you on a social sphere or professionally or educationally. So find that balance this month and know that you will grow as a person and your relationships are going to prosper because you're a brighter and happier and more fulfilled human being. So personal development this month is the most important thing. And then the, I would say, secondary or even tertiary for some of you is how to balance that out in a relationship sector. And so you'll figure that out, but, um, but don't leave yourself out of the equation, okay? Let's go ahead now and take a look at your destiny card. Destiny, of course, is are you happy with the overall path that you're on? Because this is in a spread, this is somewhat malleable and mutable. So you can use your free will to decide, am I on the right path? And this message uh, may be an indicator of that, or it may be a way to get closer to what you're trying to do. So uh, let's stop talking and start shuffling the cards and see what the message is for destiny. The final card is all about movement and your destiny message is try to kind of dance through the highs and lows this month. We have celebration. Uh, the card was reversed though, so it's saying look for those good opportunities. Remember your central card was five of cups, which could mean because of some sort of a situation in the past, a rejection or sadness or something that you're mourning, that it's hard for you to see that good things are around the bend. Start to expect the positive stuff coming in this month and it will. Do some things that are just fun, whether it's hanging out with a friend, literally dancing, or if you could see each day as fluid, you know, not sort of rigid, it has to be here or here. You kind of flow between them and feel like the energy of life, which it is, by the way, is very much a dance. And so you take the good, you take the challenging, and mostly you're in the middle, and you can kind of celebrate that ability to just be centered and love life and see what's available to you. But dance overall is saying find some things in your life that make your heart sing, make your body feel alive. And I think that goes back to the personal development card. And when we were looking here also at love, doing your divine purpose, feeling like you're um, connected to that abundance. That's going to make your heart dance, your mind dance, your energy dance, and this is going to bring great things into your life. All right, let's go ahead now and review everything that we talked about, and then I'll leave you with a closing word. Your channeled message this month is to keep an open mind, explore all options, and realize that there's more than one way to get something done. Again, the imagery that I received was a room with many portals, many windows, many doors, so try to look in unlikely sources for those to come through. For some of you, that could be a partnership. It could also be when you're at a party because we had this dance card at the end. So know that the more you sort of stay open to these opportunities, the more they can come into your life. We have a message here that it's time to move on and that as you leave, as you let go, don't feel like you owe uh, a debt to some of these situations that you've been through. I feel like many of you have spent all the time and energy that you needed to in a certain situation and now it's time to take that leap of faith. We saw that actually over here when we were looking at wealth with Odin, AKA the hanged man reversed. It's okay, you've, you've given and learned exactly what you needed to out of this situation. So there's no more debt to pay. Uh, as we look at your central cards here, we have five of cups, a period of mourning for some of you, a period of trying to find the good in a challenging situation and it's crossed by a card that can sometimes indicate difficulties in communication or trying to just walk away from a situation that really isn't worth the energy. 
Fortunately, the rest of the cards are really, really positive around it. In fact, some of you have been sitting on a great idea. That's why it's in the deep past. This is a month where you're possibly going to bring that into fruition. The important thing, though, is balance this month because we have the Seven of Wands and the Ten of Wands. So you have the ability to take on everything, but you don't have to. And in fact, if you continue doing that, it sort of sets up an expectation that you always will. And this cheats you of that partnership, that uh, reciprocity that we were talking about earlier. Be decisive in what it is that you want this month because we talked about the inverted uh, triangle. You know, the beginning of the month is all about possibilities. As you get further on into that month, be specific, and that's going to help you make the decisions on really where you want to put your time and energy. Uh, with the Strength card in reverse, take care of yourself. Try not to overexert yourself physically, but more importantly, when it comes to relationships and just external stress in your life, say no. Let some other people pick up the slack, even if that means that they might have a moment of embarrassment. In many cases, this is because of an aggregate of many years of them not pulling their fair share. Relationships are important this month, but you're going to have to balance some past life karma with also that reciprocity that we talked about earlier. And for many of you, a decision needs to be made or you may be dealing with a partner's decision. This could involve a physical move. It could also involve a question of whether you want to stick in that situation or not. So at the end of the month, you'll have some big things to kind of deal with many of you, but there's also a clean slate. So no matter what your relationship status is, your job status, we have a rebirth card at the end, which means that you end the month in a better place than where you began it. So just know that whatever your journey is, it's going to leave you um, richer for that experience. And for many of you, again, that might be being able to sell an idea, get a new job, or have some sort of an advancement with your resources. As we look at your health card, pick and choose your battles. Unity is the word that we're focusing on here, but the unity may be called into sort of conflict because you are taking on too much of the load or you don't agree with someone's uh, decision making or you're just ready to step out and step forward into your own path. So figure out what part of it is you uh, that might be causing or feeling that tension and what part is the environment. This will bring you that sense of peace and as we look at wealth, understanding that it's probably time to move forward. Trust your intuition. Again, this is the hanged man in reverse for all intents and purposes, which shows you that you have the knowledge you need, but you might be holding on. And I think for some of you, you're holding on because of a, a sense of obligation. Uh, just remember that you deserve to be happy in this equation. And when we look at love, that's actually what's coming through here is satisfaction and passion. It's not so much about other relationships, but the test the litmus test for many of those relationships as to whether they truly see you and they truly support you is, will they allow you to develop yourself? Will they show up and be an equal partner? Will they pick up the slack that they've been sort of letting go all of these months and all of these years in some cases? We have a celebration at the end of the month. The fact that we see dance here and we see the two of cups, it could be a wedding, it could be an engagement. It also could just be some great news and, and there might be a party that you're throwing. No matter what, celebration is saying that you should start to incorporate some joyful activities in your life, whether that's learning or experiencing things for development or just for the sake of fun. This is going to help keep you happier. It's going to improve your strength. It's going to allow you to let go of things. And dance is a divine way to channel energy from the great beyond. So this brings your monthly reading to a close, but I hope that it gave you exactly what you needed to embrace all of the opportunities and deal with any of the challenges that might be coming through. If you'd ever like to discuss something that we talked about here today, or if there's something else going on in your life, a big decision that's been weighing upon you, and you need some advice, feel free to reach out to me. You can do so by clicking on that first card in the video or the first link below, and this will take you to my booking site where you can take a look at rates and availability. If that makes sense for you, then I look forward to talking to you. Otherwise, I mentioned earlier that there are a lot of ways that you can give back if you just want to say thank you and you want to support the channel. The second card and the second link will take you to a page on my site that walks through becoming a patron. You can do either a one-time contribution or something that's continuing, and you can do that through either Patreon or PayPal or even here now with the Join button. These contributions make a very real difference and impact in allowing me to continue to show up each and every month. Uh, not only do they help me buy supplies, but most importantly, they allow me to set up the calendar time necessary to produce these videos, which is approximately one day each or about half a month. To everyone who has contributed in the past, thank you so much. 
Today is a direct result of your love, your kindness, and your generosity. And if you're thinking of doing it today, thank you for making the next set of videos a reality. Another way that you can really make an impact in this channel is simply by liking and subscribing and joining me across social media. If you click on that third card or third link, this will take you to a page on my site where you can join me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I also have a newsletter if you're interested. And if you really enjoy what you see and you would like to share it on your social media networks, I just want to say thank you so much because whenever you do that, you help me reach a larger audience and the message of all of these videos is one of empowerment and enlightenment. So allowing me to do that for more people, that helps me fulfill one of my purposes on the planet. So much love and light to all of you for uh, helping me out with that. Let's step into the final word now for this month. Everything is pointing towards movement and shifting. Your catalyst, traveling lightly, traveling nonetheless. Ten of Wands, moving towards an end. Rebirth or judgment, making that decision and coming through the other side, feeling brand new. Partnerships and relationships, moving, changing, and shifting. Giving up something. Sometimes it's giving up the decision-making ability in a, in a relationship and allowing that other person to make up their own mind. By doing all of this, by starting to move forward, you're allowing for more abundance to come through in your life. And you're also stepping into, for, for many of you, sort of the next step in your soul's evolution. Because this rebirth card is showing that some of you may have moved past a big karmic point where you no longer have to sort of experience pain or difficulty or unhappiness. Now you can start to embrace opportunity, uh, happiness, partnership and celebration. And an improvement in your physical and mental health. So this is a gateway month for you. If you'd like, you can kind of piggyback off of what I was talking about earlier and imagine yourself in that room of doors or portals or windows. Look through them and see, where could I go? What might I do? If I weren't tethered by all of my past experiences, all of the responsibilities around me, let me get back to my source. What is it that I'm supposed to be doing on this planet? I talk about this sometimes, but if you can write it down in a few sentences on a small card like this, it can really help organize and galvanize all of the opportunities that want to come through for the next year. So think about doing that this month and it could be a powerful exercise in helping you manifest. So that brings everything to a close and I just want to say thank you again. You have so many choices here on YouTube and in life as well. It humbles me and honors me that you chose to spend the last 40 minutes or so with me. Wishing you love, light, and abundance now and always. Be kind to yourself and be kind to others. I'll see you next month.